Ooh. You guys hear that? See it coming out like that? If you hear that hissing, that feathering, and you don't have a just a clean stream coming out of this, and I've, I've got cleaner in it now, this is an indication that it's time to clean the gunk off the needle, clean out the nozzle head, and do some basic maintenance on your airbrush. A lot of you guys ask me questions. This is one of the primary questions I get asked all the time. I get it in messages, emails, YouTube comments. Let me show you how I clean this out. I'm going to be taking apart some stuff. I can only take apart what I have and I use an Iwata Eclipse. One of the things that I like about this Eclipse is that it's pretty easy to take apart and clean. So we're going to start by taking the back off. We're going to loosen this, it's the needle nut. We're going to slide this out. Yep, it's dirty. You guys can see that, right? We're going to put this in the cradle. So we're going to address the main part of the chamber in just a minute. But you guys should be able to see without very much trouble that's got junk all over it. This is easy. As a matter of fact, you can even see it coming off in my hand. So classically, when you guys hear that hissing sound and you get a feathered spray, it's time to get the junk off the end of the needle and then you probably have got some clogs in this little nozzle head. Okay, this is the, the thinnest opening. This is where the paint actually atomizes in your airbrush. It's this point right here. And it will, with repeated use, get clogged, get gunks of paint in there, um, any types of particles, even if you have pets. Um, especially cats. Cats are like the worst. Not the cats themselves, but their fur. It's very lightweight and it floats. So you can even get, you know, skin, human skin in there. So there's a lot of things that can happen inside of this nozzle head, but with some pretty basic stuff, we're going to get it clean today and I'm going to show you how I do it. For this little quick tip, you're going to need some 91% alcohol. You're going to need the cleaning solution of your choice. Um, it may not be my choice. I actually prefer to use the stuff that's made by the brands of uh, airbrush paint that I have. Only because I'm not a chemist. Um, I really don't want to fool around with trying to mix things at a certain um, percentage of this and that. It's just easier if I go ahead and buy it from whatever company. In this particular one, we're going to be using airbrush cleaner. I'm also going to use a little bit of the Wicked Reducer to thin that paint out if it, if it needs to. But one of the things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis is 91% rubbing alcohol. And I don't use much of it. You also want to get a Q-tip for this. So we've got all of our stuff together that we're going to be using for this quick tip. Let's get started. I also have collected a couple of Q-tips. And then you want, now this just came out of the dryer, um, you want something that has a relatively low lint level um, that you really have to make some effort to pull lint off of this. Paper towels are not good because the fibers can actually attach themselves to the needle and in the nozzle head, so I do not recommend that. Um, but that being said, there are some things that you can use. The other thing that I'm gonna be using today it's a basic airbrush cleaning kit. And see, you can see that there's a little bit of fiber and cat hair on this one. So, at this shop, could be anything, but more than likely it's just paint, because I do try and keep it pretty clean. Um, I vacuum every day. I try and get the dust out of wherever it is that I'm gonna be working. And basic tools like this can come in real handy. I've got alcohol set aside in this little cup got airbrush cleaner set aside in this one. I do have 
the airbrush cleaner that we'll be using for the chamber and the reason that I've, I've said this before but the reason that I like to reuse this this is an old US uh, airbrush set and it did have color in it and cleaner um, over the years I've used cleaner through it because it's got this little high pressure nozzle so that when you squirt this into the chamber it comes out at a higher rate of speed and a lot of times that'll knock the gunk and little bits of paint out um, first thing that we're gonna do so we're gonna, I don't know if you guys can see how gunked up that is, but I'm uh, gonna add a little bit to the tip of this Q-tip. And then I'm just gonna pull this out. And you can see right away that this is coming off. So you wanna make sure that every place where paint shoots through is as clean as possible. Now you can look down that and see that the from the inside out is good and this this really should not get paint inside of it because you have your nozzle we'll see the nozzle fits in just like this okay so there shouldn't ever be a time when you see paint coming through this general part here you'll see it on the outside and we've just cleaned that and that's shiny just like new so this is done that's easy and if you ever do see paint on the inside of this, you've got more problems than probably you want. You probably just don't have a tight seal. You haven't closed this to your airbrush. You shouldn't ever see that. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is going to clean off the needle. And you can see that there's quite a bit of junk on it. So very carefully take your fingernail and just run it down from lengthwise and try and feel where there's any type of, and there's a couple places, the usual suspects. This would be, this area right here is right about where the trigger lines up on the airbrush. So a lot of times between the chamber and where this trigger sits, as it slides back and forth, you will see some paint stick here. And we'll address that in a few minutes but I can, I can see several spots that have got little tiny globs of paint. And we're just gonna pull off with our nail as much as we can. We can scrape down this. The needles are pretty sturdy. You gotta be real careful around the tip. You don't wanna bend that tip. You wanna avoid that at all costs. But if you just run your fingernail up and down and then just feel to the touch as you slide this back and forth, usually you can figure out where your paint is gunked up. So we've given it the once over. I've taken off any clumps that I can feel, but I'm gonna turn this around. We only used one side of this. I'm gonna turn this around. I'm gonna put it in just a little bit of alcohol, this 91%. Now this has a really high evaporation rate, but the other thing you have to watch for with this is you don't wanna leave it on the material too long. It will have a tendency to tarnish this and if you leave it in your chamber, let's say overnight, you don't ever want to do that because it can eventually tarnish and eat away at the protective coating in the chamber. So this is just for immediate cleaning, but you want to take this alcohol swab and run it down the length of your, always go away from you and point towards the needle. And then just any and you can see there's more little globs of paint that's coming off on that. So you want to get as much of that off as you can. And then just run the tip through the top of this Q-tip that's been saturated in the alcohol. Now there's not enough alcohol to really soak around this, so it's fine if we just set this off to the side. And then you want to bring your hand back through and feel for any imperfections, any raised spots on this needle. And I think we're looking pretty good. So now we have two parts clean. We've got the nozzle head completely clean. We've got our needle clean. This is a little bit trickier. Um, I'm going to use a clean Q-tip. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to use the Q-tip for that part at all. I'm going to use this. And we're going to drop down just a couple of drops 
down of cleaner. This is just this airbrush cleaner that I've put into this nozzle. Now I'm going to come over here and I have an old, 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 old master needle from something that I don't even use any longer. And it doesn't matter that the tip is a little bit bent on this, you just don't want to rut out the inside of this. But you want to take this needle and just kind of scrape down while you have your cleaning solution in this. Just kind of scrape around the edges very gently. Get all around inside of that nozzle tip. And then push this out and through several times. Now, if I were seeing a lot more, and just for, I think for the purposes of this quick tip video, if I were seeing a lot more junk come out of the top, what I might be inclined to do is take this tool, and we'll get to this, and once again, just add a little bit of cleaner, run that up the top. and then push this through very gently. You don't want to jam it in there. Now these are metal and steel. I believe this is a brass fitting, but it's two different types. Now you could get extremely detailed on some of these. You can actually take a little tiny wrench, and I think this part unscrews, but usually we'll never have to get that far with it. But then just kind of move this back and forth, get inside of that, keep turning it, pull this back out, see if there's any gunk on it. And I, I usually clean a few times a day and I thoroughly clean when I'm done for the day. And then I'll leave a tiny little bit of cleaning solution in the chamber itself. And then I'll, as I'm turning this off at the end of the night, I'll keep the pressure up, turn it off, and then I'll spray just spritz every hour or so I'll come out to the shop. The shop obviously attached to my home, so it's easy for me to do that, but I'll, until the pressure goes down, I'll just keep releasing little bits of fluid, and that helps blow any additional junk out of there. And once you've run that through again, make sure there's nothing on the cleaning needle, once you've run the cleaner and the pipe cleaner kit through this, come back through with your needle tip and see if there's any additional stuff. Now I did, I am getting just a few little pieces off now. And that's pretty much it. Looks pretty clean. Not seeing a whole lot on there. It looks like there might be a little bit of glitter that's stuck in there too. That's glitter that's coming off, that's not paint. So, it might have been some, uh, some of the iridescent or pearlescent paint that had a couple little larger pieces than wanted to shoot through. But it's just something that you want to check every time. And just make sure that that's clean to where when you pull this out, you should be able to look down here and see, now I don't think the camera is going to be able to pick this up because it's such a small opening, but you should be able to see clearly through that to the other side. And if you can't, then you still have junk in here. But if this is clear, then you've done everything that you need to do with that. So the other things that I, I get questions on in regards, and we're just going to put this together, but we're not going to put it on yet. The other thing that I get questioned on is this trigger piece. Now, one of the things that you can see happening from time to time is that when you push this trigger down, it's a very slow release back up. This one's okay, because I just cleaned this the other day, so we shouldn't have a whole bunch of paint buildup in here. Um, and you don't want a whole bunch of fluid in this area to begin with. Sometimes you get a little bit of paint back flush when you're flushing your chamber out. Some paint will come backwards into this area, but generally you don't want a whole lot of that to happen. So what I'm going to do in this particular circumstance, just to make sure that we're good to go on here, is I'm, I dip my 
Q-tip and the alcohol because it has a higher evaporation rate. And then I'm just gonna squeeze that into this little area here. And then I can bring the back of this Q-tip and brush this. Now this does come out matter of fact if you guys want to see that the way this works is that you pull this out okay and you see a little piece that comes up here and then you can lift this out completely and then it has a nozzle that it goes back in but we're gonna lower this and now we have this piece and this is the other piece that I'm talking about where you can take that out just clean it a little bit Make sure there's no paint or junk. We already have a little bit of alcohol, and you can see there's, there's some residual. So it's probably not a bad idea to clean that. Not a bad idea at all. And then we'll get some cleaning solution behind that. But the reason that I say that you don't want a whole bunch of stuff going in here, especially liquid, is that that will, even though you have a trap, if you have the... Uh, the compressor that has the the moisture trap in it you can clean that out but there you go we got a little bit of gunk in there that we were able to get out and now setting this back down let's address this so you want to make sure that there's no sticky junk on here and there is even though I cleaned it the other day so we'll take a fresh clean Q-tip, we're going to use the alcohol, and we're just going to brush this down. And you can see that there is some junk on here, and usually it's going to be a darker color. It's going to be your blacks and whites, because those are generally thicker, your primary colors, opaques. And I do use a lot of opaques, especially for detailing. So you just want to run this down and clean it. This will save you a lot of headache. There you go. We'll do the other side too. Just to make sure we have all the junk we can possibly get off of this trigger. It looks like a little yellow residual in here as well that wicked golden yellow that I was using on the last video. Matter of fact, just keep this as clean as you can and you'll save a lot of time and money and headache if this is, what, maybe 10 cents this is going to cost you for a couple of Q-tips, a little bit of rubbing alcohol. That's about how much money you've used cleaning something that's upwards of $100, closer to $200. And just drop that back in. Now there's a little hole that you line this up with and it only drops one way. And generally you can see that, there we go. Generally you can see that because there's a little divot on the underside of the front. So you always want that facing your chamber. So that's it. Not tacky at all now. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So now you can go ahead and you can put your needle back in here and it is a very smooth there's nothing that's hindering it from moving back and forth anymore we've got a really good really good clean on this that's pretty much it it's the basics folks um, we're going to pull this back through we're not going to tighten this nut down just yet because and put that through we're gonna slip this on and it makes a hundred percent sense to show you that there's no more feathering issues once we do put this on now, the other thing I get asked about is some people are like oh I've got paint that's st stuck in here just do the same process 
you can clean these threads out folks right here matter of fact if you want to see it done just add a little bit of the alcohol in and you'll notice on the better brushes that you'll have the threads that have been put together with brass and they're fitting in to like an aluminum or an alloy that's not brass because similar metals will fuse together different metals generally don't and I learned that a long time ago with my pool cue different story different lifetime but the same applies for anything that's threaded especially with metal and metal um, so you'll probably on a good airbrush never see the inside of these threads be brass like the outside of these threads are keeps them from fusing together just a little uh, I didn't know that tip for you guys and maybe most of you did um, some of you probably are smarter in engineering and metals than I am but that's it that alcohol has a high evaporation rate we can just drop this into here put that back on very smooth fits you want that to fit well so that you don't get any paint where it's not supposed to be you want to take this needle and slide it till it won't slide anymore don't jam it through tighten this nut up sounds good but we want to make sure actually I'll run a little alcohol through here just a bit and we'll bring cleaner behind that there we go clean as a whistle and ready to take on your next project your Jekyll Bates quick tip